Hey, what's up? Leron here, and in this episode of Painting Masters, after many, many requests, we'll review works by Winslow Homer. So really, this artist doesn't need as much of an introduction. Um, one of the leading painters in the 19th century, worked mainly in oils, but also in watercolors, and I will try and show you a healthy mix of the two. I think there's a lot to learn from his work, and I really do love it. Um, it's really funny because initially when I saw his work, a while back I didn't really connect with it but then after I found the, the the niche within his work that I like I found that I was able to connect to many other paintings so I'm sure you'll enjoy this one I'm sure many of you are really well familiar with his work but it's just gonna be fun to review it and talk a bit about it so without further ado let's get started so look at some really awesome paintings now I do remember the names for most of, most of them uh, but if I'm not I'm gonna check so this is Long Branch New Jersey now one of the coolest things, in my opinion, in looking at his paintings is thinking about how old they are. And it's pretty much the only representation of reality we have from back then in color. And when the painting is so good and it just looks so real, that's like looking at a photo taken back then. But there weren't any color photo photos back then which is really just mind-blowing to think. So you get, get to see reality as it was. Um, now in terms of what I love most about his work, I think, is the the good balance between uh, details and simplified areas. So for every detailed area, you will see an, another area that's highly simplified. It's very uh, reduced in the details. Like, look at the, the sea. It's just pretty flat. There is a bit of variation in the water, which is lovely, but it's still quite flat. Look at the ground here. All of these small details, they're still very... Um, very light touch. But then when you look at the figures, you get some, uh, some uh, like significantly more details. <laughs> look at the dog here. That's really cool. Um, you see everything, you see their clothes, you see the, how the light shines on them. It's just beautiful. And you have a bunch of figures here. A lot of people feels really like a Sunday morning for us. It's Saturday here uh, of just vacation, going to the beach. Really awesome. I really love this one. I have to say one of my favorites. So I wanted to start with that. I love the crispness of it, especially if you look at these two figures up front uh, in the foreground, just this, the beautiful crispness of it. And it, this is actually similar to the beaches we have in Tel Aviv. So I don't know, it's just cool to think about it. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. This one's called On the Style, I believe. Yes, On the Style with an I. Um, not sure what that means, style. I know turnstile. I'm not sure if that's similar. But in any case, the reason I wanted to share this one relatively early in the video is that it is watercolor and gouache. Um, so he often seemed to have mixed watercolor and gouache use. Um, and this is one of them. Uh, look at the simplicity of the washes. Just the sky, the hills, and they're very blue, so a great sense of depth and distance. And then a lot of green and yellow where it's closer to us, the two figures. Um, and there's so much simplicity in it. You can pretty much see the pencil or uh, graphite. I'm not sure. Sometimes I believe he didn't use just pencil. Um, you can see the line work, and it just looks so good. And it's clean, it's crisp, it's simple. This kind of simplicity is one of the things I want to emphasize here because... A lot of experience is required in it. When you remove the details, when you remove the, the detailed rendering and, and you keep it very simple, there's actually sometimes more experience that's required to do that. It's more bare bones. It's more naked in front of the audience. So it can get a harsher criticism specifically because the painting is so scarce in details. So you really have to know what you're doing. And it's just beautiful, beautiful work. Let's move on to the next one. So this is called The Bathers. And this is, I believe, a wood um, wood engraving. Uh, so one of the early works that I've seen uh, on Wikipedia on his page. Um, I actually don't know much about the technique, but I believe you can see that it's wood. You can see by the texture. I don't know much about engraving, but I know it, it was a very common medium in, in and of itself. Uh, so I just thought it would be cool to show something a little different while we're at it. Um, and again, there is a, it's always this good balance. And I, I just sent an email to the email followers a while, ago, a short while ago, a few days ago, uh, about how the magic is in the, the details. So it's not about the right and wrong way of doing things. The more you can improve your skills, uh, whether it's value control, whether it's um, 
shape and 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 uh, composition design uh, the more you improve in these elements the the more incrementally your painting gets better and better and better and that's exactly what we see here all of these components together that lead to this beautiful result next up we have this one it's called i forgot the name but it's really well known breezing up a fair wind well, this is one of the most beautiful paintings. Now let's focus on one aspect because there's like an infinite things to talk about. The color harmony here is spectacular. There's the blues and turquoises and ceruleans and then the oranges. And these colors just work so well together. Uh, and look at how he pushed it um, really to the extreme. And this guy's shirt is just pure pyrrole, orange, red, cadmium. It's so strong compared to the the beach and this is a, a, a nice little compositional approach where you um, or color harmony approach where you use one two complementary colors one's a little more saturated the other is a little more muted so if you look at the orange it's really saturated here the blue is a little more muted so they work really well together and he could have emphasized a lot of colors with the boat and the wood and everything it could go a little more brown a little more even green a little more blue but he purposefully avoids that and has that beautiful color harmony that i think is really worth mentioning now here's how important it is to have a background like let's remove this boat in our imagination the painting would have been still beautiful but this tiny little boat in the distance adds a lot to it because it just gives you one more thing to contrast when it comes to size and the sense of depth you know contrast is what leads paintings in very often and, and the contrast here is between the sizes close large boat small tiny boat the colors and saturation very saturated up close a little more muted at the back even though there is this beautiful red flag here which is really cool i thought that was a cool touch and look at the borders it's a little brown to show the where the mast is and then the cells are a little blue um because they're probably white and the light shines through them so it's just beautiful now look at the harmony here on the sail itself just lovely look at the light strong Maybe it's starting to, the sun is starting to set or get a little lower. Um, I think that's really, really nice. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is something crossing the pasture, I believe. Um, yep, crossing the pasture. I love his greens. Greens, look at all of the different colors in the green. And this is how I'm always asked about how to avoid boring greens. It's a common tendency to just use a flat green. Or even if you're using a few greens, it's just a pure green. Just this kind of a green that's more yellow and this kind of a green that's a little more um, viridian. And that's not good enough in my experience. What you want to do is inject into that green some clearer oranges, some clearer reds and yellows and even blues. This is what leads to interest. You've seen it in my uh, one of my recent videos, um, the one with the uh, realistic golf cart. I used quite a lot of orange and red and yellow and red into the green, and this is what leads to the, to the beauty of it. Okay, and this pasture is I want to say pester. Uh, pasture is beautiful. This mountain in the back, very green. As we get closer, it's a little more just pure, very blue, then <laughs> more green, and then really orange, and you get to see the ground through the grass. I love the, the sense of place that this conveys. This is maybe a cabin uh, in the mountains. It's beautiful. And when you think about it, it's fairly realistic. This is how this scene probably looked. And you have no color photos from this time, which is really mind-blowing. Uh, to be honest, here it is. Artists sketching in the mountains, I believe. Yep, this is just so nice. What I love about this one is it immediately reminded me of my travels to South America. And we were in this place called Ausangate, which was beautiful in the mountains in the Cusco region in Peru and it was a similar atmosphere the ground and it is sunlit and there is some sun but the sky can be a little moody it can be a little gloomy and this contrast between the two um, parts of the subject is beautiful look there's a, this tree stump or wooden stump and then a wine bottle on it or something like this um, you see the bag of the artists here and the artists may be painting one another this is really cool. And if you know about this and who the other artists are, let me know. Let me know if you know more interesting details about these paintings in the comment down below. I always am blown away by what people know. Uh, here is uh, another watercolor and gouache, I believe, uh, from his more lonely period. This one's called Easter Point Light. 
Um, again, highly simplified, but you do get to see the beautiful reflection of the moon in the water. It's this dry brush kind of section that makes me believe this is watercolor. Um, and gouache, from what I read, he used the two together a lot. Uh, just not much to say, but it's a beautiful scene. And again, the simplicity, don't let that fool you. There is a lot of skill that goes into that. And you're standing more naked in front of the crowd with uh, this kind of a painting. And you really need to do things right uh, in order to get it right. You can't hide it by or mask uh, um, your flaws by just adding more details. Um, so, yeah. And really cool one. Here's another one, watercolor and gouache. This one, I don't know the name of the painting. I just love the clever, sorry about that, that's my phone. I just love the clever composition. I'm actually waiting on a delivery, so I need to be on it. Um, but yeah, just beautiful um, composition and shape design for the trees' uh, trunks, you know. Uh, look at how these the, the trees are hinted at by the gaps between the dark sections. Very common thing to see, but just beautiful. And even his small touches of like this bird, Looks like a condor, um, but I don't know what it is, honestly. It's just so clever. It is not just a like a triangular shape. It's actually, you can see the wings of the bird, but it's still very touch and go. It's not too detailed, not too busy on the eye. It's just really clever, in my opinion. Uh, here we have some ducklings, and the, the it's it's a, such a cute scene. And I think if you look at just this section, the middle, I don't like the color harmony as much. But if you add these uh, blades of uh, grass or whatever thing that grows near the water, look at all these reds and oranges. They really um, fix the harmony, in my opinion, and, and add some more interest to it. The sky is lovely as well. I can really feel like I'm there. Uh, it's just so nice, such a nice painting. Here's another one, forgot the name, something Green Hill, the Green Hill, <laughs> I was close. Now here, look at the flatness of the washes. It goes to show you, you don't need much. The basic composition is what drives the painting. So yes, you do have some details. And by the way, this may be an unfinished work, I don't know. The, the sky is a little more detailed, yes. You can see some clouds, some hints. Maybe it's just the fact that it's unfinished, I don't know. But look at this mountain ridge and that mountain ridge and even the foreground and the rocks here and even the figure very few details even this barn or house there very few details so it's interesting to see how just how much you can tell by simple shapes good composition a lot of interest you get some lines that move diagonally like this some lines that move diagonally like that the figure um, interesting, some interesting highlights and values, just very clever. And again, the magic is in the simplicity, um, which is what I love about this one. So yeah, it's just a skill to develop. This one, Boys on the Dory, I believe. Oh, nice, I remember all the names. Uh, so this is another, I believe, watercolor and gouache. Look at these nice little ripples in the water. Now, here's the thing. What I love about this one is the color harmony. If you look at the colors, they're very deliberate. In my opinion, there was a lot of thought that went into this particular color selection. Uh, yes, you can say it's the classic uh, blue and brown, you know, like a burnt sienna umber, and but it's more than that. He limited the range of colors to these very specific blues that are kind of lilac-y cerulean blues, and the greenish browns even. It's even more towards the green-yellow. Um, and it's very clever. There is a clever um, choice for every little element. Like if you look at all of the boat and the boys in it and the background, it's very smart. But then you get this one, uh, this little fellow sitting at the edge of the boat. And his shirt is more, it's a stronger blue than the rest of the scene. And it really pulls your eyes toward him and makes you think to yourself, is this the focal point that was intended? Or is it like, look at this this guy here. It's a very light shirt and the boat is dark. So it also is a high contrast point which pulls your eyes to it. So there are a few very interesting uh, focal points, very different, very far apart. Um, and I just think there's a lot of cleverness. And it's not necessarily blue in the background and brown in the foreground. He didn't go for that. Like the, the land, the mass of land in the background is actually quite yellow. Um, so it's just an interesting way of composing the scene. And I, and I love the fact that it's a very uh, horizontal composition. The boat is thin and long, elongated. The, the land mass in the background is very long. It's only broken by a few small elements, such as 
the boat here, the boy here. The, you know, it's it's very clever. It's a very clever composition. Let's look at another one. Prisoners from the front, I believe. Um, just again, it's mind-blowing to think that this scene may have actually looked like this. Um, because of the painting's high level of realism and accuracy, it probably looked something like that. And being there and seeing, the, seeing history is just insane to think about. Uh, but yeah, not much to say. It's just when the painting is so... I don't know, it just looks like a photo in a way, and I, I don't have much to say. Just a very interesting composition. It's something you'd see a lot in the older, even, paintings, where there's just a bunch of people in the scene. It's not They're not necessarily spaced in an interesting way, but it just does the job, you know, and it's such a high level of realism that I don't think it matters. And I wanted to end with this one, one of my favorites. I don't know the name, so let me know in the comment down below if you know the name of this one. I couldn't find it for some reason in the quick search I did. And here it's just the softness, the haziness, the sharpness, uh, the background and the rider here. It's just so smart. I love the edges here. They're very uh, hazy. And um, it's just an, such an interesting technique, you know. Just a hint of the light that's shining. It's a, probably a, a white horse, a fairly white horse. So you get a strong reflection. Um, it's just so smart. The, the number one thing here, in my opinion, that makes this so pleasing to the eye is just, again, how sharp the shadows and light is on the rider, the figure in the center, compared to the softness of the mountains. And once again, you get this beautiful contrast between the cooler colors, this time in the background, warmer um, skin tones and warmer shadows on her clothes, and then this blue to enhance the vanishing, the vanishing point, the, the, the focal point. Same goes here, you get a bit of blue and red. It's just a very, very clever composition, a very realistic um, application of the medium. Just beautiful. Um, for someone who's speechless, I talked quite a bit about this one. So in any case, we're gonna wrap it up now. Thank you so much for joining me in this adventure. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to do another one. Now let's wrap it up face to face. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'm happy to cater to your requests. So as always, leave a request down below. Let me know which artists you want me to review in the future. I had a really good time with this one more than I expected. Um, and I've, many artists that are, you know, really well known, well renowned, classic um, old masters, new masters as well. Um, I am not necessarily that familiar with, so doing th these videos really helps me um, and it's fun to you as well. So let me know if you want the more like old masters, like really traditional ones um, or new contemporary artists. I'm up for it all. I really do appreciate it, uh, you watching and everything and leave a like, leave a comment down below. It really helps me reach more people and subscribe if you still haven't. I have a bunch of other videos that I think you'll enjoy. Thank you so much and I will see you again in the next one.